late payment. Um, can you talk about that? Yes, sir. We just did during the monthly financial report. Comparability. Some people say comparability. Some people say comparability. When I was asked the question about the 491000 by Dr. Irwin, okay, that shows what we had paid during December for comparability. The, type, the bottom line, the million one ninety one, is our estimate of the four ninety one, which, as I said earlier, our experts assert that's the right number. The state has a different number, and an estimate of the fifteen liability for comparability of about six hundred thousand. So that's the, the one million one ninety one is both years fourteen and fifteen. Is that money? Is that money that goes back to the state, or does that go out to the? What, I'm not sure where that gets it's a, to. It's an assessment penalty that we pay to the state. We wire it to them. They take it, and they look at it for a while, and then they, if I've been informed, send it on up to the federal government. Is there any way to avoid that penalty? We have a lot of meetings and a lot of discussions, and yes, sir. I mean, it's a very complicated process. Dr. Preston is one of our internal experts, okay? But, yes, we're trying to. And, Dr. B, if I may, that's what I mentioned. The state has evidence a willingness to reopen negotiations on this matter and, and I feel very positive about it that we might and that we will uh, come to uh, an agreement as to a number that we think is fair and equitable and we received a communication to that aspect last week which is what we discussed during Dr. Bell's e earlier presentation. Gotcha because uh, 1.1 million is a lot of money that I sure would love to see spent in the classroom. Um, in retrospect, um, I mean, we've been doing Title I for a long time. Um, was anybody in particular held accountable for um, these penalties? Well, what really happened is the state two years ago, and Dr. Preston, you may want to speak to that, Dr. Beasley as well, uh, the state began to calculate the numbers differently. And Dr. Beasley, you may want to speak to that. Yes, sir, Mr. Thur Thurming. Good afternoon, everyone. The, the state... Prior to last year, the state basically allowed districts to self-report the numbers. Therefore, you didn't have many comparability penalties. Now that the state is actually pulling in the data electronically through the uh, CPI report, the numbers basically speak for themselves. What we submit through that process is impacting the comparability. Uh, you ask, does it, is, is anyone held accountable? HR, finance, Title I budgets and allotment, we all work together to ensure that, first of all, all schools are funded at par, equitably, and then, of course, being a very large district, we work diligently to ensure that Title I funded staff is in addition to what is provided locally. Clearly, when you have many moving pieces, there's always the potential that you may have some situations where it appears that someone was hired here on this campus and that may have impacted your equity ratios. And again, that's what we work to ensure is uh, minimized and then of course we work to mitigate that when it does occur. And I'll add, what's really driving the issue in DeKalb County, and I'm repeating myself, is our long-standing commitment to provide high quality educational and support services to, for children with special needs. And the state is just now recognizing that and how it impacts these two different programs under two, two different sets of lo uh, laws and rules. And what we are having to do is to really integrate the thinking and the state is beginning to recognize and we're not going to back off in any way, form or fashion on our commitment to educating children with special needs. Come what may. And I think that's a commitment that this district has made for decades. And we've shared that with the state of Georgia. But I'm encouraged that the state now is beginning to recognize that it's not a matter of mismanagement or oversight. It's just that you're comparing apples to oranges. You're comparing staff and teachers at a school with high percentages of special needs kids, which is greater with schools that have lower percentages. Is that fair the way I'm saying that? Yes, sir, that is correct. And if I could add, Mr. Thurman, we're also comparing very large schools to very small schools. And our district, we've had a commitment historically to very small schools, if you will. And so that also creates a situation for us when it comes to staffing. Um, Mr. Dr. Preston is excellent with what he does. I've, I've not seen anyone who, who is more detailed than he is. 
However, the truth of the matter is every decision relative to staffing impacts comparability in a very large district. And so the penalty is because we as a community, we have bought into supporting our students being educated in the least restrictive environment, which means that sometimes it appears that we're providing staff members which may impact the equity ratio, but we have to work to monitor that. And in this situation, we receive the penalty. And I, and I shared that, Mr. Chairman, with uh, representatives from GDOE. Uh, because of our commitment to providing services to children with special needs, I've raised the concern that there are those who will take this fact and try to use it as a negative to allege financial mismanagement or lack of oversight when really it's a commitment to helping children with special needs. Is and this commitment going to cost us another $1.1 million next year? If needs be, and this is what I've said, and of course, while I'm here, if this is what it takes for us to continue our commitment to children and parents with special needs children, so be it. I think the state is going to rethink their position, but this is a commitment that I don't think that's negotiable when it comes to this population of students. Ultimately, I'd like to see the board make a, a policy decision on that. Thank you.